So today I am very excited. We are going to be doing an unboxing and a first impressions of the Pulse R X2H in white. This is my first white mouse, so I'm actually very stoked about this. And this mouse is kind of a specialty mouse, which is why I ordered it. This mouse is designed specifically for claw grip. And so that's what the H stands for is hump because there is a bigger and more prominent hump in the back of the mouse meant to fill your palm. So size two is their size medium. There's also the X2H Mini, which would be their size one. This mouse is also lighter. Where these mice are around 60 grams and this is 54. So I'm also excited about that. Here you can see the bigger hump and the back. So the other big thing too is it does have a 3395 sensor and that is essentially the top of the line sensor. That's similar to the sensor that we have in the Viper V2 Pro and essentially equivalent to the Hero 2 sensor. And that's really the standard today that we have in gaming mice. If you're going for competitive gaming, if you're just casually gaming and playing single player games, this is not gonna matter nearly as much. Okay, so enough talk, let's open up this bad boy. All right, there we go. That is a snug fit. Wow, that is a nice presentation. That looks really nice from the start. So right away, before even holding it, the coating does not look glossy. Let's try it out. Yeah, not glossy. And it actually has, it feels like a little texture. Wow, that's really nice coating. That is surprising me, actually. You can see on the G Pro X Superlight 2, the hump ends more at the center, at the top there. And so now compare that to the X2H here, you see how the hump ends more at the back? over here. That's what I'm talking about where it's meant to fill my palm more. And then compare these two to the Viper VT Pro. This is just a much flatter mouse. First time gripping this mouse. Let's see. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So that is immediately noticeable for a claw grip. I can feel how that's locked in. Wow. That is really good. I can feel it fill the back of my palm more. What's interesting too is the sides here are more narrow. So you can see right here where I'm pinching, it's much more narrow. And so the idea is to get that more locked in feel, which I can already feel it doing. And maybe I won't need grip tape. So I'm going to use it a little bit without the grip tape and see how it goes. It almost feels like I'm holding like a tennis ball, right? Because because this hump is so prominent in the back. It feels like a ball in the back of my hand that's really filling the palm in a very positive way. The X2H here is coming in at 54 grams and then the Viper V2 Pro is coming in at around 60 grams. And let's see, between the two, yeah, I can feel the difference. Six grams doesn't sound like a lot, but I can feel that. It's very slight, but it's there. The fact that all these gaming mice are getting lighter and lighter, that's really nice. I'll say the weight balance is not as good as the GPX. The GPX feels feels very balanced and it feels like the weight is just like centered. With the Pulsar here, it feels, okay, you can actually see it. That makes a lot of sense. It feels like it's heavier in the front. And you can see since it has holes at the bottom to reduce the weight even further, it's just, re it's completely hollow back there. And then the sensor and the battery and everything is more forward. That's actually interesting. I can feel that. I wish they would have centered it a little bit more and it's just noticeable enough when I'm like trying to pay attention to it, but I didn't notice it until right now, until this is the topic I was trying to talk about. So it's not unbalanced in an unusable way by any means. The Viper feels pretty balanced as well too. Maybe a little bit more forward heavy too, like the Pulsar, but this feels the most forward heavy. Can't really see that affecting my aim or the performance that much, but just to be nitpicky and fair, I will say that could have been improved and it's definitely better on the GPX2 here. So let's try the clicks for the first time. Here are the main mouse buttons. That feels very solid. There's a little pre and a little post travel, but it feels like it's almost an equal amount on both sides. And it's not mushy or squishy when I am running into the pre or post travel. It still feels pretty solid. The clicks are definitely definitive. I wouldn't say they're like light or easy to click, but they're not necessarily hard either. Yeah, I can spam that pretty good. That that definitely feels nice overall. I am pretty happy with that. Uh, let's try the other one. Yeah, feels about the same. A little bit more pre-travel than this other one here, but same thing. It doesn't feel like wiggly or loose at all. That That's definitely a nice experience. Let's try the scroll wheel. Ooh, okay. 
Oh, that is that is fantastic. Okay, this scroll wheel is phenomenal. That might be because I'm coming from the GPX2 here, where this mouse wheel is actually really, really bad. I've had problems with this where it has scrolled up on its own in the middle of a game and got me killed because it's just so easy to scroll up and down. The Viper V2 Pro here is, it's easy too, but not as easy as the G Pro X Superlight. This feels extremely dialed in. I am actually impressed with this mouse wheel. So each notch is extremely definitive, but not hard to press in, but definitely not easy. Like the tension I feel like is just right. Like I can definitely hit that very easily when need be, but I don't feel like I'm ever accidentally going to have it activate up or down on its own like the GPX2. The click down is a little hard, but it's not like super hard, but it does take some tension. I'm like pressing down a good amount on it. But yeah, much easier on, on the GPX2. Pressing down on mouse three, which is clicking down on the mouse wheel, it's probably the hardest on the Pulsar X2 here out of the other two mice, but this is actually really nice. I'm actually really looking forward to that. If it functions as well as it feels, this is absolutely fantastic. That's great. That's that's really great. So now the other big thing too is the <laughs> GPX2 is well known for its really crappy side buttons. They are just, just mushy. So let's try these side buttons. Holy crap, that is so much better. Man, this is this is way better. We do have a little bit of pre-travel and that's just a little squishiness, but it it already feels better. And I think the reason why is I can feel that the spring or the tension or whatever's pushing back against the button, trying to push it out, there's more of that pressure on the Pulsar compared to the GPX2. Like whatever the tension or the pressure pushing it outwards on this mouse is just very, very light, very light. But the pressure here is much stronger. Not that it's hard to press by any means, but it makes it more definitive. So like, I feel that there's a little pre-travel there, but I know and I can feel like I know when it's about to click. So I'm going to push in a little bit. There's all the pre-travel and then click. And then afterwards, I still have a good amount of post-travel afterwards. But same thing. I can feel the tension being pushed back against me. So I know when it's going to click. And then I feel the click more definitively. And then the post-travel, it doesn't feel nearly as bad. So it also has an on-off switch at the bottom here too. And a DPI button. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the DPI button. I feel like they could just cut that out entirely and save a little bit more weight. But that's just me. I know some people do like to change DPI on the fly. But for most people, my Myself included. Once I set the DPI, it's set. I don't really change it. I'm going to try these stock skates for a little while and see how smooth the glide is. They seem nice just at first impressions. And let's see what we have in the rest of the box. Packaging is actually really nice and the presentation is excellent. I'm really enjoying the time and effort that these companies are putting into making these mice feel like a premium product. Like this feels very, very premium. And so did the GPX2 here and the Viper V2 Pro when I opened them up. And these are expensive gaming mice. These are all like $100, $150 gaming mice. And I think that's another thing I need to talk about is there is a major price difference between all of these. So I got this for $100 and it feels just as premium as these other mice. The Viper V2 Pro came in at around 150 or so, I believe when it first released, I believe that's what I paid for it. And now you can probably get it for a little bit cheaper because it's a couple years old. And then the GPX2 here was 150 or 160 on Amazon. And so to be fair, this mouse does go up to 2000 Hertz, but is that worth the extra 50, 60 dollars? For a hundred dollars, I feel like I'm getting very similar, if not better quality. Like I said, these clicks are better and the mouse wheel is better as a whole compared to the others. So that's something really to consider that there's a lot of other options out there now that you don't necessarily have to spend $150 for a top tier gaming mouse. And like I said, these sensors are all supposed to be equal or at least comparable. Okay, so let's continue opening up the rest of the package. Packaging is really nice. I like the logo. Oh my gosh, this cable right away feels fantastic. The GPX2 cable was just utter garbage, like a completely unusable if I needed to play with it in game. This I think feels better than even the Viper V2 Pro cable. This is really nice. So before all these wireless mice came out, a very common mod that I would always do and many people would do is we would paracord our mouse to change out the cable to make it as loose and flimsy as possible so you have less resistance when you're swiping it around. This is very light and 
and very flimsy, which is good. Not flimsy in a way that I feel like it's bad quality or gonna fall apart, but it's nice that if I have to play with it plugged in, it's gonna be less resistance against the mouse while I'm playing. This feels very, very nice. I'm actually very happy with that. This is also a USB-C cable, which is very standard nowadays. So props to Pulsar for providing a good cable. And then, man, same thing. Packaging is actually very nice. Let's see what we got here. Specifications, 3395 sensor, 26,000 DPI. So that is another thing to mention that the DPI can go higher on the other two mice over here. You're never gonna actually play at 26,000 DPI, 30,000 DPI, but the higher the DPI a mouse can go, the more accurate the sensor is gonna be. So that's why that number is important. You're not actually playing at that. So that also might be one of the differences too of why this mouse may be a hundred dollars compared to let's say the GPX of 150, 160 dollars for these other mice. Is that enough to make a difference in game? I don't know. That's one thing we're gonna have to try to find out and test. Got a nice little sticker. Ultralight wireless symmetrical esports mouse. Okay, let's see. And we got some nice instructions over here. So I'm gonna say too, even this instruction manual, it's like, this is high quality. This isn't like a super flimsy paper, like a lot of the other mice will come with. It's glossy, it's thick, and it's colored. Like they actually put time and effort into this manual. This is actually, this is dumb, but this is like the highest quality manual from a gaming mouse I've ever gotten. It's, it's a really dumb thing, but you know what? I appreciate the time and effort that they put into it. Okay, and then one last thing, we have the uh, USB dongle over here, and then, yep, there we go. And then I'm not sure if you can see that. It says Pulsar right here. It's like engraved right there, there you go. So that's nice. The packaging is just really nice here from Pulsar, they've done a great job. Okay, so that's about it when it comes to the unboxing. That's everything that it comes with. I did get grip tape, and my hands do get sweaty, so I grip tape almost all my mice. This is the Pulsar Super Grip, and I'm gonna be honest, I actually don't recommend buying this grip tape at all. I did a full video on this, but just a quick summary is this is rubberized grip tape that is really nice, but the problem is, is there's an extra layer of stickiness, but it wears off and it only lasted me like a couple weeks at most. It's an inconsistent experience that changed day after day after day until now it's completely gone. I got this because I essentially got it for free because there was a promotion going on and I was like, why not? And then I'm going to wipe it down with rubbing alcohol to get that layer of stickiness off. And there's other options out there that are cheaper, or if you want to go with a roll of like hockey grip tape or tennis grip tape. That's an even cheaper option. So there's a lot of other choices out there that are just not as expensive and then you won't have to deal with inconsistency. And then the other thing that I'm excited about is this is gonna be my first 4,000 Hertz wireless dongle. And with the Viper V2 Pro, this only went up to 1,000 Hertz. The GPX2 here does go up to 2,000 Hertz. And then the X2H does go up to 1,000 Hertz. But then if you purchase this dongle separately, it can go up to 4,000 Hertz. I'm very curious and excited to see how this goes. I wanna see if the 4,000 Hertz might actually improve my aim in aim labs or if all of it is just hype and just marketing to get you to buy extra stuff. So being that this is my first Pulsar product, this has been extremely impressive. It's actually blowing away these other two top tier gaming mice in many aspects, including the clicks, the coating, and even the packaging and the cable as well too. And this is coming in at anywhere between 30 to 50 to 60 dollars less expensive than these other two options. So keep in mind, this is specifically a specialty mouse designed for claw grip. If you don't claw grip or you have a hybrid grip, or if you go with something like a fingertip or a palm grip, there is the normal version of the X2, which they call the X2 V2, where the hump is gonna be more centered on the mouse instead of having the hump further in the back. That might be another option to look for too. If you want something around $100 that potentially has a better quality than these other top tier options. This has been my first impressions and unboxing of the Pulsar X2H and I am actually blown away, especially for the cost and just really surprised that it's actually an improvement compared to these other gaming mice that are arguably some of the top tier gaming mice on the market today. So better quality and I spent less money. So we'll have to wait and see how it actually performs because that is the big question. That is what really matters. So anyways, guys, I hope you guys all had a great holiday season and thank you so much for all the support out there, especially you guys out at Mouse Reviews. It has really meant a lot to me. So happy holiday, guys, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.